Aloha everyone and welcome to another Carbon 60 video by me, Kay Elmer, and this video is a little different. I'm just going to answer a question uh, that I've been getting uh, quite often in the last month or two uh, about how to clean glass suction filters. And so I thought I'd just go ahead and do a real quick little video so you guys can see what I do. So here we go. Um, now when I mention glass suction filters, I'm talking about these little glass rigs where there's a funnel on top, glass thing, uh, you know, glass flask, and then right here is you either have a, a metal clamp or a plastic clamp that clamps down so that the two attach, and then there's a you put filter paper right here in the middle. Uh, so, and then of course there's these, this other one I've talked about before, and these are the disposable plastic ones, and these things are great too. So let me just, real just quick so we're on the same page. These glass ones, there's a lot of pros and cons for both, but the, the glass ones are obviously the most economical. Uh, the pros are that you can use different size filters in terms of thickness of filtration. Uh, you can use, because it's glass, you know, you use it as long as you want. Um, you know, there's a point where this top funnel has a stone, uh, and that's and there's one that has a stone and one that doesn't. This one doesn't have it in the picture, but the one I use has a stone, and that stone will someday, I expect, someday get fully uh, fully clogged. But uh, I'll show you how I keep it clean. Uh, and then of course the cost is a one-time cost of thirty-five dollars. And the filters now you just buy these little packs of paper filters, different sizes um, of filters that fit the funnel the funnel diameter uh, and then there's also different uh, filtration sizes as well so you got to be really careful when you buy this thing and you're buying your filters you're matching that you make sure that you get a filter that's going to fit this funnel as well as making sure that the filtration size is the one you're, you're uh, aiming to get uh, now the cons about using this thing is that the funnel is always smaller than the flask okay so the one I have has a 350 milliliter funnel but a thousand milliliter flask and so 350 right I got to fill this thing up three times to fill up the flask and when you when I'm you know running a batch of c60 that's one full liter you know a thousand milliliters uh i you know i gotta basically babysit this thing watch it go all the way down fill it back up wait goes down fill it back up you know fill it three times so you have to babysit the thing and that's a little bit of a, a of a pain in the acole uh, and then the other thing too that i just mentioned is that the stone in the funnel if you have the kind that has a stone i don't um I mean, I do, uh, but some people don't. Uh, the stone may or will, I don't know just yet. It hasn't happened to me. Uh, it may get uh, filled up. Uh, I mean, uh, clogged up eventually where you won't be able to clean it. I haven't run across that yet, uh, but I kind of, well, you'll see in the pictures that, you know, why I believe that's, that could happen. Now, that's the, that's the, the glass one. I'm going to walk through how to clean this thing because it, it ain't, it's not, it's not intuitive, man. This thing is like, you know, totally different little thing you've ever had in your kitchen before. Uh, now, th just want to mention too on this on the plastic one, you know, I get questions about which one do you use and, and why and what for. So, uh, the reason that I use both, um, and I kind of had a video in the past where I kind of just said I stick to this one because of e economy. Well, then over here, I kind of went back to the plastic ones because I'm just lazy, and and because here's the thing about the plastic ones that the funnel holds the full amount. Okay, so. You know, when you're kind of busy or you're going to like leave for the day, you know, a lot of times on weekends, I'm not home all day. Uh, and so, uh, or even at night after work, you know, I saw so it's really nice to just fill this thing up, plug it into the pump, set it and forget it done and then you know the next day it's just done uh, and then i like that you don't have to babysit it uh and there's disposable there's no cleaning because you know you're going to see this is you know, it takes work and then you know it's 11 bucks okay and so you know but here's the cons right you it's only going to be the filter size of the one you buy so as you buy these things each one of these things will have a different filter size um and then you have to pick the one that you want at the size of the filter I, you know, the meaning the like 0.22 uh, micron meters, uh, and then of course the size of the funnel and the flask, which is 1,000 milliliters, uh, and you know the cost. It's 10 times more expensive than filtering uh, using paper filters with the glass, and this is what I mean by that. Is like you buy filters, and then I think I came out with a video. My last video was like it came out like 37 cents a filter, uh, you know, and so basically if you have to run it through three times, that's like what a buck. It's a dollar to run something through this one whole time, you know, like a thousand milliliters. Over here, you want to run a thousand milliliters, it's going to cost you eleven dollars. So it's ten times more expensive uh, than to go use this one. And so, but you know, if eleven bucks is nothing to you, and uh, and you're lazy, and for me, it's like, hey, I like, I like. I like setting it and I like forgetting it. So uh, I do use these when I'm making full-on liters. Uh, but then I, I do use this as well. 
uh, especially when I'm using when I, I'm doing uh, this is kind of how it's worked out I use this one when I'm using pulverized c60 and I use this one when I'm using powdered c60 and that's kind of how uh, I've settled into it so here you go cleaning process now off uh, when you're cleaning this glass uh, suction filter uh, I leave the pump connected you're gonna need that you're gonna want to wash it uh, by running dish soap and boiling water through it you until you fill the flask uh, and then once you've washed it, you want to rinse it by running boiling water through it again and fill the flask. Okay, so another thousand milliliters. And that's just how this is my way of doing it, by the way. I didn't look this up or anything. I've just had to wash this thing dozens of times. And so I have figured out that this is like for me, it's the absolute best way to get this puppy clean. Uh, step four is leave the pump running for an hour when you're done because what you want that pump to do is keep that vacuum pressure and just suck every last little bit of moisture out of that stone that's mine if you don't have a stone you can skip step four but I leave the pump running on the stone because I want it to just suck all the moisture out um, and then then after that you wash the flask and the funnel stem where there's a stem in here uh, and, and I highly recommend using lab brushes and I, I didn't want it at first uh, I was really uh, pake about it which is means uh, that's a Hawaiian word sorry for for being cheap uh, and so I don't want to spend the money you know, on these lab brushes I'll just use whatever I got now it, it I couldn't find anything that I have that would get into these little crevices around you know this 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 weird angle through this little tiny nozzle uh, and then there's that stem and it, nothing so I just ended up buying the brushes. Oh, by the way, everything I'm talking about, as you know, is going to be in the video description. Links provided. So, so now I made this little video, uh, and let's just walk you through it. So here you go. Okay, so this is my rig, and what I did was I ran, um, essentially, I had run an entire uh, 1,000 milliliters of pulverized C60 in olive and avocado oil through this thing using a 10 micron filter. Um, and you can just see this stone is supposed to be semi-white uh, and it just uh, totally you know the pulverized c60 is a really unique form of c60 to deal with but it's so fine that it's gonna go through a lot of the filters and it gets stuck in your stone uh, so I'm seriously thinking about getting a different kind of glass one that you saw in the picture as opposed to this kind of uh, glass suction filter but anyway, so that's what the stone looks like at the bottom of my funnel. And you can see just how dark brown it got from the pulverized C60. So uh, it, it, it's kind of like I'm really rethinking it. So I just use regular old dish soap. And I've actually been thinking that maybe it might even be better to use like Blue Dawn. Because that's what they use you know, on, on when they have oil spills and stuff. So I was thinking about trying that next. But anyway, just regular dish soap. Um, boiling water and so the and then so you fill it up three times with boiling water and then you run the machine and you're gonna see what happens when I turn the machine on it's gonna just create the vacuum in the bottom part and pull uh, all of that soap and, and and boiling water through that stone now you notice right now I'm just gonna stop it right here that before this thing creates this suction there is nothing dripping through at all you can just see it is completely bone dry and so this stone is so saturated with p60 um or pc60 that the pulverized c60 that uh you know it, it's clogged and so now basically i'm going to create the vacuum using the machine and then it starts to suck it through and you can see how dirty it is and and so basically it's going to just draw that soap and the soap is important because soap is breaks down the oil right and so the soap and then the boiling water you know just going to work together and it's going to just suck it through uh, you do this three times to get all of the you know soapy water three times you fill up the flask this is what it looks like when you're done and you can see how you know the, the water gets pretty dirty and that's all c60 and the sludge from the oil uh, and then you're basically this is what it looks like you know you basically uh, wash the stone that's the first wash the one and only wash actually uh, and then the next thing you do is you just want to rinse it through uh, pour the flask out <laughs> obviously uh, and then uh, rinse it through I just use plain old boiling water and just good thing I have this little hot pot I love that thing uh, and then I just fill it up three more times and then run water through but look how fast the water starts coming through uh, the second time once you run the soap and, and hot water through the boiling water uh, it pretty much just look how fast the water just boiled poured through without me even turning on the, the vacuum but once that vacuum gets turned on it just goes straight it goes really quickly look how fast that thing's coming through uh, once you run the soap and the boiling water through one time so after you run the 
the clear water, which is the rinse quote, the rinse cycle, um, then you basically, or this is what I do, is I will then leave the vacuum uh, pump running. Okay, this is just as I'm, I'll leave it running. Okay, let me stop right now. After you are done rinsing, okay, this is what I do. I leave the pump on for an hour. And that, again, it this is, uh, I think, a very important step it just keeps sucking it just keeps sucking on that stone and it'll dry the stone it'll pull everything out and get all the moisture out or i would say the majority of the moisture out uh, and so this is after i have washed it's after i have rinsed and this is what it looks like after i have let it suck <laughs> dry for a, an hour and you can see look at that that went from super 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 dark brown right uh, and now it's kind of light tan and that's kind of the color of it so that's kind of how I do that, uh, and it's you know it's as simple as it looks. Uh, it does take a little bit of time and effort, uh, and then when uh, step five is when you're done, uh, leaving the you know drying your stone. Now if you don't have a stone like this one doesn't have a stone, you know that's that's why I'm thinking man, I mean, maybe spend the thirty five bucks and buy the other model, uh, and then so but step five obviously either way you got to wash the flask and the funnel stem, um, and so then that's why I highly recommend and the links are in the description. Um, to get these two brushes <laughs> um, and you know they're not cheap like this one's like 14 bucks and this guy's like eight bucks but you know honestly it's like if you don't have the right tool for the job it's gonna be really hard to do the job so uh, these are the two different brushes and so uh, just to kind of point out because this guy's got this real steep angle you can get that whole circle and you can get a real good scrubby on the bottom and your flasks come out just squeaky clean and then with this little straw guy this it's basically it is that's what it's for it's for cleaning the insides of straws uh, and you just run that puppy up the stem wash it out real good and then I you can run it around the stem on the outer section uh, of the stem inside the funnel uh, and to clean that area up real nice rinse it out with hot water and you're good uh, the one thing I do want to caution all of you guys when you're doing it this way when you're using boiling water and I have done this so many times I forget that thing is gonna be super hot and I have burnt my hands many times grabbing a hold of this thing uh, and, and just getting boiling water on me so be just really careful because you're you're washing with boiling water so that's it Thanks for watching. That's how to clean a glass suction filter. And uh, I'm glad you are watching this. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, and, and thank you again. I thank you for taking your time uh, and, and, and watching my stuff. I, I do appreciate uh, you guys subscribing and stuff. It's just, it's really cool. I'm <laughs> very humbled by it. <laughs> Somebody actually told me this week uh, that, they, that they, they just, I'm just really just surprised. Anyway, uh, oh, and to learn more about our, um, uh, to, about uh, to all the ins and outs of making C60, you know, I welcome you to join uh, a C60 Telegram chat group uh, that one of uh, my Twitter friends, uh, Paul Tonto, uh, decided to start up a Telegram chat group. He calls it the Good Vibe Chat Group, and I'm totally on board with that. It's all about being positive. It's about how we can help each other and share knowledge and share tips and tricks about how to make C60 and different oils and all that stuff, and it's awesome. I mean, we only started this thing like, I don't know, four days ago? Uh, we've got up to 40-something members now, and people are just dumping ideas like crazy, and it's just awesome. And also, they're dumping lots and lots of questions and help each other. We're all each other, you know, we're all helping each other out and answering, and that's what this video is for, so... Hey, if you're, if you're into making C60, join the chat group. If you've got questions about making C60, join the chat group. Throw the question there. Someone's going to help you. Um, and hey, thanks a lot for watching. Aloha. Have a great day.